Welcome to the channel, should be an interesting video. Just uh, bought this Jaguar F Pace 2016. It's uh, 2 litre diesel and it's got an engine problem. Hence the uh, tow hook. So, fingers crossed, and get this one fixed up. It's going to be my new family car. These Jaguars are new to me. I've never worked on any JLR products before. Um, I like it, it's a good size, so it's going to be a perfect family car. At the moment, I've got a Cayenne S 4.8 that is horrific on fuel, but it's really handy. And I've got a Mini Hampton diesel that's really good on fuel, but less useful. So I'm hoping this fits somewhere in between the two of them, and then I'm going to get rid of both of those to replace it with this. So I just got this Jaguar F-Pace delivered back home. Um, it's a non-runner. There's a bit of a story behind it. It's the R-Sport model, which is a two litre diesel. Um, but I think it's got different wheels. They don't look particularly special to me. Um, got some nice things on it. It's got two-tone lever. Got panoramic roof, it slides open. Got the upgraded uh, sat nav. It's uh, snazzy, way nicer than anything else I've owned. Um, so it's got an engine problem. And so what happened was it was advertised on Facebook Marketplace. Um, the guy. I bought it off, bought it a month ago, uh, and he bought it as an on-runner himself. Uh, turbo was blown, which is what, what he was told. Uh, so he went out to Jaguar, bought a turbo from them, spent a thousand pounds on the turbo, I got the paperwork for it. Um, and he, he basically started digging through it and the engine was knackered. Uh, he had uh, one liner fitted and then they were all uh, bored out slightly I don't think you can go much on them uh, bigger pistons um, so you had all the all four pistons replaced new bearings um, mains and bottom end on the crankshaft um, and then basically he's done a few trips in it and he said he was booting it down the motorway and it started knocking uh, within 20 seconds the oil light came on and then it stopped running uh, so he, he admitted himself he hasn't run it in so it could be that was the cause it could be that the original original reason this engine has failed was missed um, so basically I'm gonna pull the engine out and strip it down and uh, see what's what and hopefully I can work out what's gone wrong I, I'm expecting this, uh, this um, spun a bearing on the big end um, that's what he said it sounded like and it's probably the case with the oil like coming on so yeah should be easy to work on because the engine's literally just been out so it shouldn't have any seized nuts and bolts but part of me would rather have had it with this original failure rather than someone who's already been in there because I'm not familiar with these cars and these engines so it might take a bit of work to work out exactly what's happened here um, I don't want to replace the engine I want to try and fix this one he's, he's spent a lot of money on new parts for it, new timing chains um, stuff like that so and obviously if, if the uh, all the pistons and the bores and stuff are still fine then it's going to be a good base to probably just get the crank reground or maybe a replacement crank you can buy used engines, they're out sort of three grand um, so don't really want to spend three grand on an engine 
I paid eight grand for the car, which I think is pretty good. Um, they are, I think, the, the mileage is 112,000. I think this age, this mileage, probably looking at about 13 grand. So, it should be decent. Like uh, saving in repairing this one, and then I can have it as the family car. Really dirty inside. But it'll be nice when it's cleaned up. It's just sort of gunned over. A load of detritus. The leather's a bit dirty. I think white's a brave choice. It's not one I would have uh, gone for if I was specking it. But yeah. That's the larger sat nav, which was an upgrade. Don't know what the difference is really. Um, condition wise, it's pretty good. It's it's obviously dirty, but I haven't really seen any damage on it. Uh, that's quite good. I did notice somebody spilt paint in the rear. Some emulsion on the carpet. So. Hopefully, uh, take it somewhere to get that sorted out. Steam cleaned or something like that. So, first step is going to be pull this engine out and see what I'm looking at. So, I'm just having a quick look on the diagnostics before I touch this car just to see what it's saying. So, on the engine, we've got um, a couple of faults with the uh, charge cooler I think he's not plugged in the pump probably there um, the exhaust gas temperature sensor circuit that could be an um, interesting one if the DPF is blocked could be something to do with that um, the invalid data is just where it's been towed and then these are just tow related fault codes so I think all of those are clear and the SRS is just where the uh, battery voltage was low. So, no codes for the DPF, which is one of the things I thought might have caused the original failure. Um, so, interesting. The first thing I've taken off is the DPF. So it's my first chance to have a look at the other guy's work. And it's not been brilliant so far. That bracket is supposed to connect to the heat shield on this DPF, and it wasn't little bracket by there that was just loose it fell down I don't I think that that was just sort of held under a heat shield not actually connected to anything and uh, I just noticed something there ratchet he's left he's left the ratchet so it's not striking me as uh, great attention to detail so far no wonder this engine's failed so quickly. So I just have a look inside the bottom of the DPF. And it's partially blocked. Not brilliant. So I'm just halfway through pulling out the engine now. So separate it from the gearbox. Got my uh, block and tackle there to lift it up. So I'm going to lift it up. Hopefully I've got enough height just to swing it over without having to roll the car out of the way. Uh, plenty of space in this engine bay. Normally you'd have to take the whole front end off. On most cars I'd pull the engines out off so not being too difficult this car to be honest. So I've hit a snag pulling out this engine. I can't go any higher than that and that's nowhere near clearing. <laughs> So it looks like I might have to take the whole front end off anyway just to get it out, which is a little bit annoying. I've come up with a plan to get this engine out without taking the front end off, taking the wheels off, and then I dropped it down on that air jack as low as it's going to go, sitting on the wishbones. Um, I shortened the chain a little bit, I have to get it to go a little bit higher as well. And 
we're just about clear I think it's gonna be close so fingers crossed I don't scratch it so I've got the engine out only just cleared the wing it's very close so now I need to start stripping it apart I bought the uh, proper timing tools I also bought that which is quite expensive, it's like 70 quid for installing the uh, rear crank seal. Now, the reason I got the proper tool is because it's only just been replaced and it's leaking already. So the last guy obviously didn't do it right. So if a job's worth doing, it's worth doing properly. So I've got the cap off. It's looking pretty gnarly. There's a cap there, so I need to pull the crank out and uh, maybe take it, see if I can get it reground. If not, I'll uh, get a replacement crankshaft for it. So I just pulled the shell off one of the other pistons, and you can see all the metal in the oil. Take a lot of cleaning this engine. I could probably do with a uh, engine stand. I don't think this is the textbook way to get the crank out, but it's out now. So, see how bad it is. This is how the shells are looking. Obviously, that one is missing. Everything is scored. These are brand new shells as well, so they've only done. About 150 miles, something like that. That's the mains. So, I think quite bad scoring on the ones. The either side of the, the big end that got taken out. Um, I noticed at least three. So, I noticed at least two of the other um, big ends had spun the bearings as well. Um, all the bearings had little pieces of metal on them. So, not looking that good. I'm going to take the crank to a machine shop tomorrow, get their opinion on it, if it can be saved. Uh, it's got some scoring. But, I don't know if there's anything that's too bad on those ones. And then that one was obviously manky, but I think that's more material on the crank rather than material taken from the crank. I think that's the uh, the bearing sort of mashed into it. So I'm going to see what the machine shop thinks, whether this crank is uh, worth saving, if it can be saved, or just uh, get another one. So just dropping the crank down to South Wales Piston Services. So, uh, see what they make of it. So, so I've taken the uh, camshafts out. Which are over here. So, it don't look too bad, except for this one here. There's quite a deep score on that. And catch your nail on it. It goes all the way around. And then on the corresponding rocker, it's also scored there. One thing I'm going to be doing is. Uh, getting rid of all the emission stuff on this car so I got the DPF there I'm gonna be uh, cutting that open and uh, cutting it welding it back up so you can't see it's been done I'm gonna block off the EGR uh, so I sent the ECU off uh, to get it bench flashed with a new map 
it's got all the emission stuff taken off it and one of the reasons why is look at the difference between the ports there that one's just been wiped with a rag and and so this engine's only just been back together so you can see they've cleaned the ports because they wipe up really easily but that one's uh, full of like sludge already and the car only did a couple hundred miles these EDR systems are a lot of trouble on mod diesels they're uh, a pain in the ass. so in terms of reliability I'm ditching it all and uh, just cross my fingers I get it through an MOT physically it's all going to look exactly the same I'm going to keep all the EGR cooler this is all the EGR stuff around here I'll keep all of that um, but it's not going to be doing anything so you've got your feed down off the exhaust so I'll, I'll block that up there and then this one feeds back in to the downpipe a load of rubbish this oil cooler there is uh, bolted to the side of the block and it's got this pressed metal gasket which rather than replace it the previous owner decided he'd put a load of silicon on it which uh, you put silicone on both sides and so that's like sort of pressed everywhere and part of me thinks that might have um, sort of blocked up some of the oil ways a little bit and now I've pulled the oil filter out and you can see a big string of silicon that's got in there now there's a strainer on the pickup for the oil, um, the pickup pipe. I got one. I just chucked one in the bin. So there's a strainer in there. Can't quite see. It's full of metal on this, but there's no way the silicone's getting picked up from the sump. Now, looking at the workshop manual, the first thing that gets fed off the oil pump is this oil cooler, and then it goes into the filter. So I'm thinking that slapdash silicone job could uh, have contributed to the engine failure if we uh, lost a bit of oil pressure. Um, I'm not going to say it's a smoking gun and a definite cause, but it certainly wouldn't have helped things. So that's a lesson on uh, cutting corners on gaskets. Finally a dry day, so I'm going to take this opportunity to get there. DPF, so I'll make sure all my cuts are underneath these heat shields so when I weld it back up it can't be seen. Um, plan is cut open the uh, side of it and then smash it all up with an air hammer. So looking at it with the covers off, you got your D DPF section there and that's going to be a catalytic converter. Now the DPF looked blocked, but the catalytic converter didn't. Um, so my plan will be just to remove the DPF and leave the cat in. Although when I open it up, if it looks different, I might change my plan. So I cut the flap off. So I'm going to start smashing it out now. Didn't take very long at all with this uh, air chisel. Smash right through it. Um, generally it didn't seem too bad, but there are sections where you see it's blocked up. So that's the uh, DPF welded all back together. And uh, just blocking off that EGR pipe. So should be all good. So I just pulled out the pistons and I'm uh, not too happy with what I found really. This uh, engine was only together for like about 200 miles. Um, it had new oversized pistons, one liner fitted, and then all the bores were bored out to suit the pistons. And you can see the coating's worn off on these pistons. So 
and there's no scores in them. That's the piston that was knocking, but they're all they're all the same, both sides as well. So I'm thinking the uh, the piston to ball ratio is wrong. And the uh, the machine shop that did the work had a balls up with that but they didn't assemble it so they're not going to take any uh, liability for it and then you got marks in the bores as well so that's the one that was knocking it's probably the worst you can't feel these marks you don't, they don't pick up on your nail or anything but um Yeah, it's not great. I mean, if that engine done 100,000 miles and I pulled it apart, I'd go, oh, that's fine. But it's done 200. So it doesn't, doesn't bode well for the future. So, not sure what the plan is yet. I think what I'll do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop the um, block off, take the pistons down to the place that did the work. And see what they say. Get their opinion on it. So I just picked the block up. They've done a rehone on the block. So that's all looking perfect now. Crank can't be saved. That's the uh, journal. So they did give me an option on the crank where I could use a shell off a Renault, which is a different size to the Range Rover options. Um, but that means doing something a little bit off piece out of spec. Um, they said they'd only recommend that if I was getting rid of the car, which I don't want to do. I've also uh, polished my exhaust cam to take the scratch out of that. So it cost me 60 quid for a rehone and a polish on the cam. Um, and now I need to look for a crank. So it's just stripping down this cylinder head to uh, clean stuff up and it's a bit of a mess. If you look there, you can see that the valve spring's touching the casting and it's worn this groove into the top of it. There's none of that on the others. There's a few valves that are close. Uh, that one there is close. Um, and there are sort of little wear marks on a few of them just in by but there it's a bit of wear um, so I don't know what's going on there um, but then also all of the exhaust valves have got strange grooves one into the top of them Um, the only ones that haven't are these two that got replaced when their engine was last apart um, so I don't know if this is down to lack of oil or something else but the uh, the followers they got like grooves worn into them as well um, so I'm looking at this, it needs all new followers. It needs uh, at least six exhaust valves. I'd have to work out what's causing this sort of binding there where it's touching the casting. Uh, I don't think the valves are bent. They all, uh, you know, I could turn the engine over by hand, so wouldn't expect to do that if you've got a few bent valves. So it's a bit of a weird one, that. So basically, that's now left me. I've got a good block. I got a knackered uh, crank, knackered rods, knackered pistons. I haven't got much now. The head's also not really uh, looking very good. So I decided I'm gonna I'm gonna sack off this engine. Um, I'm gonna look for a used engine. 
Now, used engines are very expensive. You're looking at about four grand. Um, and I don't want to spend four grand on an engine. So I'm coming up with a plan. Uh, I'm going to look for an, uh, another car that's going to uh, have a decent engine in it. Um, and then that'll uh, be a donor for this. Um, so looking at Jaguar XEs and XFs. Um, I have seen a crash damage one. So I'm going to see if I can uh, get a deal sorted on that. And uh, I'll have to pull the engine out on my driveway. Then bring it in here and chuck it in this. So that's going to be uh, part two on this video now. Um, so thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next part.